Hey, Dev Nations, I hope you're having a great day. I recently read Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. In it, he discusses the unification of humankind, history's biggest fraud, and more. So today, I want to share with you three lessons I learned from Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. Firstly, history's biggest fraud. What is it? Well, Yuval Noah Harari calls this the agricultural revolution as history's biggest fraud. And the idea is this started about 10,000 years ago when humans went from hunter-gatherers and said, nah, let's go ahead and lean on agriculture. And the idea was that this would provide us with more fruit, with more wheat, with more food for our society. This began slowly, of course, in restricted areas throughout the globe. First, we started off with domesticating wheat and goats, from there, peas and lentils, and much more. And so this agricultural revolution allowed for an enlarged amount, total sum of food, but it did not increase the quality of the food or the quality of our lives, as we had to contribute more and more to cultivating these crops. And a brilliant quote that I absolutely love from the book, it goes, quote, the essence of the agricultural revolution, the ability to keep more people alive under worse conditions, end quote. And I think that's just a very interesting perspective. I know nowadays it's becoming more and more common to talk about diet. And so I just thought this was an interesting perspective. Oh, around 10,000 years ago, this was the time point where we started transitioning from these very high, dense, nutrient-rich foods to agriculture where it wasn't as dense in, in vitamins and nutrients. As when we learn about history, we learn about agriculture and how because of agriculture, we can go ahead and feed more people. But I've rarely ever heard it discussed as even though we could feed more people, it actually took a toll on us as humans because it wasn't as densely nutrient, nor we actually had to put in more time to develop these crops. Next lesson is the unification of humankind. And so because we had this agriculture, this boom in agriculture, we eventually were able to start developing cities. And within these cities, we were able to then develop specializations because we were able to stay in one place and actually develop connections and develop deeper knowledge instead of moving around prior to agriculture. And because of these specializations, this eventually created a demand for some sort of medium for trade because it became difficult to trade shoes for food because there was no really easy direct way to go ahead and say shoes were worth this many corns or shoes were worth this many wheat. So eventually we developed the invention of money, which became a medium to go ahead and trade goods amongst other civilizations. And so because of this money and this trade, we started to develop trust. Civilizations that did trade with other civilizations had to eventually develop trust as they did trade with each other. And so different empires were able to go ahead and develop relationships with each other despite being from completely different parts of the globe and goods and cultures and ideas continue to spread throughout this trade. And I just thought it was cool how this sort of serendipitous, hey, we're gonna just start transitioning over to agriculture. Of course, that was over uh, several different lifespans. But I still think it's very interesting that because of agriculture that eventually led to cities, which led to specializations, which led to trade, money, and trust across civilization. It really had this really large domino effect on the world. And the third lesson is the willingness to admit ignorance. And this was because of the scientific revolution. And the main premise is that no concept, no idea, or theory is sacred or beyond challenge. And this really turned the way we thought as a civilization. Instead of accepting, oh, these are the things we know, we eventually started saying, what are the things we don't know? that is what we should focus on. We should embrace the fact that we don't know really much of it about anything and start investigating more about that. Because the previous way of thinking, I know it's tough to, to think about how humans thought 500 years ago, a thousand years ago, but according to the book, a common mode of thinking was, oh, because we don't know enough about that, that's probably just not important. And the exact example they use is how spiders weave their silk, how spiders develop their webs, right? There wasn't much information about it. And so the main consensus was that's not important. But with the scientific revolution, it said, oh, we don't know much about that. We should investigate further and learn more about it to share amongst our community. It said, hey, we don't know things and that's okay. We're going to go ahead and go and investigate to learn more about it. And even if we learn more and we think that one thing is because of A, actually we can continue to further investigate and dig and we could still be wrong and find out that it's because of this completely other thing b so with this lesson it was very interesting to just learn that this new perspective of thinking that people used to think 
just a few centuries ago, you know, 500 to 1,000 years ago, how much we've grown in terms of thinking, in terms of being open to challenging people's ideas. You know, we can still be wrong, but we embrace the fact that, hey, we don't know everything, so let's go ahead and investigate. And if we learn more, great. And if I want to challenge you on your mode of thinking, that's cool. We're going to be respectful about it, but we're going to go ahead and investigate and share these ideas so we can both come out learning from our battle of knowledge together, a battle of wits. So the three lessons from Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari are history's biggest fraud, also known as the agricultural revolution, the unification of humankind and how really money and trade allowed for civilizations to come together, and the willingness to admit ignorance through the scientific revolution and how this allowed for civilizations to challenge each other, no matter the idea, no matter the concept. If you're thinking about reading Sapiens or have recently read Sapiens, please feel free to comment down below your favorite takeaway, your favorite quote from the book. Always love to hear from the community. Remember, today's a great day to have a great day. So have a great day and thanks for watching.